it's my great pleasure to introduce Angela Dance. She's the introvert's guide to LinkedIn for people who feel awkward about self-promotion. Raise your hand if you're there. Her mission is to shift the idea of self-promotion to one of service. Education, inspiration, value, good marketing builds great relationships with the right people. Does your profile engage, inform, and provide resources? If it doesn't, stay tuned today. So I'm curious to hear what you have to say. Welcome to Be Better Platform. We can't wait to learn from you. Good morning, everyone. So my first question that I have for you today is, why are you on LinkedIn? A lot of people, when I ask that question, will say, well, Angela, you have to be on LinkedIn, right? Well, that's kind of a default answer, and it tells me a lot. It tells me that you have not made a conscious, intentional choice for what you are doing on LinkedIn. Just because you have to, and you have a business or a career <laughs> that you want to go places, um, it doesn't mean that you've really decided how you're going to use LinkedIn as a tool, as a business builder, as a career builder for whatever it is that your goals are. So I would really invite you to spend some time maybe over the weekend thinking about what would you like LinkedIn to do for you in your perfect world? You know, if I could raise up a magic wand and you could have whatever you wanted from LinkedIn what would it be? And then really start to design your profile to say that. And spend time working towards that goal. A lot of, a lot of people feel super frustrated by LinkedIn. You know, it's overwhelming. They don't understand it. There's a gazillion things that you could be doing on LinkedIn and you feel guilty because somebody says, oh, you should be doing this, blah, 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 blah. You have to decide for yourself. What is LinkedIn to you? What is its best use for you? And just forget about the rest and be consistent about those two or three things. That's really what you want to do. So I'm going to dive into the PowerPoint and we'll start from this very first slide. And I want to thank you so much for inviting me here today. I, I love doing speaking. I love, I love seeing people have aha moments about, oh my gosh, that's what LinkedIn's all about. Well, that's simple. I can do that. Um, that's, that's kind of my goal. So thank you so much for having me. So there's three things that we're going to cover today. Um, we're going to cover the top three ways to attract your audience through profile optimization, professional branding, and visibility. But then we're also going to talk about simple and advanced searches. Um, when I first talked to Samantha, she said that people are really curious about how do you mine profiles for clues so that you can send professional invitations and start conversations with people that you haven't quite met yet. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about how do you super saturate your network with your ideal audience. And so I'm kind of curious, um, how much time do you spend on LinkedIn? And here's a couple of choices. You know, do you spend at least 10 minutes a day? Are you on there maybe three or four times a week? Um, is it when you have spare time? Um, so it's kind of, you know, it's an accident <laughs> that you get on LinkedIn um, once or twice a month or less. And I'm going to stop the share because I'd really like you guys to participate in the chat and toss out some answers and just tell me how much, you know, is it every day? I mean, woohoo, if it is. Um, but how much time do you actually spend on LinkedIn? And Heather says a few minutes or a few times a week. Um, Cheryl, 10 minutes a day, almost every day. That's fantastic. Um, great. Oh, one to two times a month. Thomas, thanks for being honest. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's fantastic. 
Um, so I hope that by the end of this presentation, you guys will have a few more reasons to get on LinkedIn more often um, and actually mix it up and do some things to move your career forward. Uh, so let's go back to the PowerPoint really quick. And thanks for playing, you guys. Thanks for participating. And why is any of this important? I mean, that's that's always, you, we're not going to change our behaviors. We're not going to add something new to our busy lives unless there's a good reason for it. So since March of last year, where have you been doing your networking? Prospecting relationship building, nurturing your relationships, staying top of mind with your referral partners, and providing value to your potential clients. Where have you been doing all of that? You know, the world has changed dramatically, and we need to change with it. We need to shift. So if I were to supersaturate my network with referral partners and potential clients, I serve coaches and consultants. I think it's because my brain works that way um, and it's dual purpose for me. Um, coaches are great referral partners for me and they're great clients. So it's kind of dual purpose. So if you're doing a search on LinkedIn and you're going for second connections because you're wanting to build your network out, um, you know, they'll tell you that Almost half of the 740 million people on LinkedIn have the word coach or consultant in their profile. So in my network, um, there's almost a million people that have the word coach or consultant in their profile. Now, this person that popped up first, I want to talk about this a little bit. This is because of great profile optimization. So look at all the places she has the word coach and consultant, and we haven't even gone to her profile yet. That's just her headline um, and her provides services section. That's all. It doesn't have her, her about section, none of that. But it, what LinkedIn does is it reads your entire profile all the way down to the recommendations. And it's how many times coach or consultant appear in your profile that help you win the lottery, the SEO lottery, and you pop up first in some sort of a search. So this is a simple search. I'm not using the all filters. So I'm going to drill into this a little bit further because I can't reach out to a million people. I need a much smaller list. So I'm going to narrow that down to San Francisco Bay Area, people that are actually in my area. And that brings me down to 100,000, still a little bit unwieldy. Um, so I'm going to drill in a little bit further. I'm going to go for business development coaches. So I've really narrowed down the scope of what coach or consultant means. I've stuck with people, second connection, San Francisco Bay Area. Now I'm going for alma mater. Alma mater is still the number one way for people to connect on LinkedIn. And when I learned that, it was such a surprise. And But it's so obvious. It's like, of course, somebody from your alma mater is going to connect with you. Go Big Red. And so that narrows my list down to 105 results. Now, that's a fabulous list. If I save this list, and right over here is how you can save searches. And with free or basic LinkedIn, you can save up to three searches. So if I were to create another list, I would call this one um, business, biz dev coach alma mater. That's what I would call it. And then every week when there's new second connections that come into my network, it's going to give me alert of how many new people fit this parameter. Now, I like to work with women. So I went straight to Laura's profile. Now, out of the 105 people, she came up number two. Um, and that's because she's got great optimization. And um, Bianca, if there's a way to share this PowerPoint, I'm happy to do that. Because at the, at the bottom of the PowerPoint, um, I have actually put her URL for her LinkedIn profile so you guys can see her 
her profile and how she has it optimized. Um, and we're going to look at it a little bit closer. So she's got some fabulous branding going on here. Now, she doesn't know who I am, but we do have this in common. We're both graduates of the University of Wisconsin-Madison, and she's a NIA dance instructor. I don't know if you guys know what NIA is, but I do, and I love it. It's a fabulous dance form. So that, for me, is one of my entry points. I mean, if this one wasn't strong enough, I can also say something about NIA. So if I were to send her an invitation, I would say, hi, Laura, I see that you graduated from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, go Big Red, um, and I love Nia Dance. Um, I would love to have you in my network. Um, connect if you're interested. So just as simple as that would be the way that I would reach out to her. And, you know, she looks very friendly and approachable. Um, and coaches are great connections for me. It really is a great way to build my network. So other things that I looked at on Laura's um, profile, we have 13 different common connections, and I know Nina really well. So another thing that I could say is, Laura, how do you know Nina? Isn't she awesome? Or something like that. And LinkedIn actually serves up, you know, say hello. You can send a message to her directly right through her profile. Um, so LinkedIn is serving up all kinds of ways for people to connect. And then on my LinkedIn profile, um, as Bianca read in my introduction, um, I say that I'm a former high school rodeo champion because that legitimizes the name of my business, which is Cowgirl Creative Coaching. Um, and uh, this thing about go, go pack, um, you'd be absolutely amazed. Um, people don't want to start a conversation with you the very first time and ask a stupid question about your industry because they're a little bit intimidated, you know, especially if you're an attorney or a financial planner or somebody who's really, at, you know, in some sort of a um, field where there's some pretty intricate information. So if you add personalization to your profile, people are much more likely to reach out to you. 